Chelsea face Tottenham in what is an extremely important London derby because if we fail to win this under Maurizio Pochettino, we are firmly the worst team of the best three in London. And West Ham are putting in a good fight to be above us right now as well. Look, we obviously beat Tottenham earlier on in the season away at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's almost a guarantee for Chelsea that that happens. I was surprised in the manner that it could easily happen because Ange almost put his players up for sacrifice that day. The high line was excessive. And look, we've seen him do that time and time again this season. And he isn't going to change. So we know his Tottenham side are there for the taking. But what we saw from Chelsea against Arsenal in another London derby was so subpar and embarrassing and and shameful to call that my team that I support. I can't witness another London derby like that. So Pochettino's really got to step up and got to make sure that the players understand the weight of the game they're going into against Tottenham at Stamford Bridge. It's the last big game of the season for Chelsea, in my opinion. We have to win that. Look, Europe's gone. I know I was hopeful and I've tried to be hopeful all the way through, but not getting anything over Aston Villa, it pretty much writes it off. And I don't know how we managed to drag it out for that long because so many times this season, we've been woeful. We really have. It's it's shameful. But look, we've got quite a few players returning to training, to be honest. If, if we're really being honest, they're probably not going to play. But they are in training and I almost feel like, what's the point? And Kunku, Reese, James, is it worth bringing these guys into the team for the rest of the season that seems so pointless? I'm not sure. Look, that's down to Pochettino. But they could return. It's going to be an interesting one against Spurs because obviously Tottenham is still fighting. Tottenham are pushing for a European place. I think Villa pretty much have that top four space cemented, but you never know. It's football, right? But Spurs are going to play in one way and one way only. And we've managed to beat them previously. And Pochettino managed to get it to work. But the thing with Poch is even when tactics have worked, I never know whether he's going to stick to them and keep them as his strategy when there's evidence that they've worked previously or he's going to change it up and try something new. Like it was only a few weeks ago we batted Everton 6-0 and we haven't seen those same tactics implemented into another team or lineup or performance again since that and we we scored six goals and kept a clean sheet which are both rarities this season obviously scoring six is an extreme but scoring goals right dominating and killing off a game that just hasn't happened it was a full 90 minute performance and since that I don't think we've seen Chelsea really do that again against Manchester City no against Arsenal no against Aston Villa no we haven't been able to maintain a level. And look, I know Everton aren't a great side, but actually without the point deductions, they're not that far behind us. And we put six past them and kept a clean sheet. And they've troubled some teams recently as well. I just don't understand the method or the logic behind not using the, those tactics that work so well. And our team looked really good all across the pitch. You know, all the way from keeper, all the way to striker. And as wide as you can get, it did look pretty balanced. It looked good. The midfield was fluid. The way we moved the ball was clever, smart, calculated, resulted in an end product, which is a rarity under a Pochettino side. And we've not seen it again. So who knows what's going to happen against this Tottenham side because he's actually already got his game plan from the previous match. And actually, when you look at a team like Newcastle, they've absolutely played Tottenham off the park twice because... Eddie Howe went, you know what, we're going to change up how we play. We're going to play this way because it exposes all of Tottenham's weaknesses. And I think they've probably scored about nine goals against Tottenham this season. So Pochettino could do the same. If you remember, it was the game where Nicholas Jackson got the hat-trick, where ultimately it's one of the worst Premier League hat-tricks we've ever seen. But at the end of the day, it's a hat-trick. And I, I almost would back Jackson that I think he's a better player now than he was in that game. And for that reason, I'd... I'd like to see him on the score sheet. I feel like Jackson is really trying to push for 15 GA or 15 goals, I think is what his real aim is, across the board for Chelsea this season in all competitions. He's making a really good effort of that. And I think if that's where he is and he can use this Tottenham game to stat pad again, then why not? But there's definitely an opportunity there for Jackson to get a few goals if Tottenham 
continue to play the same way. If we're talking about Spurs and how they set up, the way they play the same way is obviously Ange's philosophy of this high line. They, they play extremely high up the pitch. They leave so much space in behind that every time... They, look, they, they're blessed to have the pace in their back line and throughout their team that they do. And when they're in a defensive transition after they lose the ball to chase back whilst the other team's counter-attacking them, they're really, really good in terms of recovery. They're very quick and they often can close that gap up in a short amount of time. That's why a player like Mickey van der Ven for them has been so brilliant. The issue is, though, is that when someone is as fast and as explosive as him, one, he has to learn how to slow down, as we saw against Newcastle, but two, he always looks like he's on the verge of putting a hamstring and so do a couple of the other Tottenham defenders. And Romero is erratic as they come, but can obviously be a bit of an enigma and make something happen at the same time. But Ange isn't going to change how they're playing. You know, that he's going to die on that sword, I believe. And that's why <clears throat> all that space in behind can definitely play to Chelsea's strengths. And we can play to that weakness of Spurs. Because ultimately, with space in behind, that's where Chelsea have been most dangerous. Players like Mudrick, players like Jackson, who are really good runners. Conor Gallagher is great in a transitional game. You know, he's not too good against teams in a low block. But when a, the same with Casado, really, to be honest with you. But when the game is open and it's end to end, you really do see what these players offer. Players like Badashile, even Dezassi, Trevor Chalaber, they look for the long ball in behind, whereas Thiago Silva's a little bit more calculated. Players like that look for the long ball in behind. And that space in behind allows us to play that. And time and time again, against Tottenham first time round, we tried it, but we weren't successful. We didn't look good enough, and it took a really long time for us to fully get going in, in that game and eventually take them apart. What I will say, though, is when is Ange going to realise that this could be make or break for him? Yes, Tottenham are in a good position in the league. Yes, they had a fantastic start to the season. But imagine in the games where he's been absolutely taken apart, he just adapted. He would be a manager with far more strings to his bow and probably being spoken about in a much higher regard if he could adapt in the games where his 100% commitment to his philosophy has cost him. I, I just wonder that. It's, it's food for thought. Would he be an even better manager? Would Tottenham be in an even better position if he'd adapted in those games that have been really costly for him, especially for goal difference? So I kind of wonder that. I'm intrigued to see what everyone else thinks. Is this going to be a walk in the park for Chelsea because we made it look like one before? Is this going to be difficult because we look like we've progressively been getting worse this season and we have a lot less to play for now than Tottenham? The main thing I think to, for Chelsea to focus on is pride. We can't let Tottenham and Arsenal beat us within almost the space of a week. That would be horrific for any Chelsea manager. I would be ashamed as a fan for that to happen I think that would be really embarrassing this group of players surely don't want that over their heads that that probably hasn't happened for Chelsea in a long long time we really need to make sure that we're up for it and we're on it and we're switched on and tactically we're prepared for this game because I mean look I, I, I truly believe if Pochettino loses this could be the game that shapes his future at Chelsea Football Club or not Obviously, I'm I'm potch out and have been for a long time, but I don't believe the board are fully out on him yet, and I don't believe the players are. But look, I think the Arsenal game was a lot of damage. They showed fight in the Villa game, but imagine they lose to Spurs, and imagine it's heavy. It's not going to be a good look. Let me know thoughts. Let me know score predictions in the comments down below. Lineup, I'm not too sure on that one. Maybe close to the time I'll do a little preview on the lineup, but. Look, I'm I'm not certain. There's a couple of players return from injury that I'd love to see playing for Chelsea, but is it a rush back job? I'm not sure. Leave your comments down below on your thoughts on the game. Are Chelsea going to get a win? Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We're on the road to two and a half thousand subscribers, and I would love you to be part of the community. And I appreciate that an awful lot. The support recently has been fantastic. And let's drop a like on the video. If we can get over 15 likes, that would be fantastic. I will see you in the next one.